untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. The footage you're about to see was recorded during the early access event for March of the Machine, so thank you to Wizards for providing me with a fully unlocked account to preview the new set. And today we're looking at the new Incubate mechanic. One of the centerpieces in our deck is the Chrome Host Sea Shark, a 3 mana 2 4 for X and Shark with flying, saying whenever we cast a non creature spell, we get to incubate X, where X is that spell's mana value. And to incubate X means we get to generate an incubator token, which is an artifact token, not a creature token, that will enter with a number of plus one plus one counters on it, equal to the number of incubate. So if we incubate two, we get to make an incubator token with two plus one plus one counters on it. And then at any point, we can pay two mana to transform it into a Phyrexian token, which is a zero zero, but of course still has those plus one plus one counters on it. So now it can actually start attacking and blocking. So the plan is to play the Sea Shark and then follow it up with a bunch of non-creature spells. And the Sea Shark has amazing synergy with Tesseret, Betrayer of Flesh. The 4-mana Planeswalker has a passive ability, saying the first activated ability of an artifact we activate each turn costs 2 generic mana less to activate, which means we can now transform our Incubator token for free without having to pay the 2 mana, both in our turn as well as in the opponent's turn. So we can potentially generate 4 extra mana out of thin air just using Tesseret's passive ability. And then by playing Tesseret on turn 4 after playing a turn 3 Sea Shark, we already get to make a 4-4 Incubator token, can potentially even turn it into an 8-8 by using Tesseret's minus 2 ability, where an artifact we control becomes a 4-4 creature, and then those plus 1 plus 1 counters will still stack on top of the 4-4, so that's how we can make a turn 4 8-8 creature, even though it will still have summoning sickness. Then the plus 1 lets us draw 2 cards and then discard 2 cards unless we discard an artifact, and the minus 6 emblem is also quite achievable, saying whenever an artifact we control becomes tapped we get to draw a card so now simply attacking with our Phyrexian tokens will already provide us extra card advantage and then looking at the rest of our deck we've got more ways to incubate and generate those Phyrexians starting with the progenitor Exarch which we will sometimes play for x equals zero just to make a one two that can tap to transform a target incubator token we control another way of not having to pay the mana to transform them but we can also sink a bunch of mana into it let's say we played on turn three for x equals one then we get to enter the battlefield and incubate three once and as the game progresses we can sink more and more mana into it to make more incubator tokens with three plus one plus one counters on them and then at two mana we've got a full set of norns inquisitor which is a one one creature that gets to incubate two when it enters and also says whenever a permanent we control transforms into a phyrexian put a plus one plus one counter on it so now the incubate two essentially turns into an incubate three as long as we control the inquisitor and that will also work with all the other incubator tokens from exarch and from the sea shark for instance and then at 3 mana there's also the full set of Phyrexian Awakening and Enchantment, which says Phyrexians we control have Vigilance, which applies to pretty much all our creatures, including the Sea Shark. And then when it enters the battlefield we get to Incubate 4. So playing a 1 mana Exarch, 2 mana Inquisitor, and then at turn 3 play Awakening, we can activate the Exarch to turn our 4-4 four four creature into a Phyrexian, gets an extra plus one counter from Inquisitor, so we essentially have a 3 mana 5-5 five five with Vigilance, so that's how these synergies can quickly add up. Then we also have the full set of Reckoner Bankbuster, which has a great synergy with Tesseret as another artifact that we can activate for free to draw a card, both in our turn as well as the opponent's turn. And then the Bankbuster will eventually spit out a treasure token and a pilot, which can help crew the Bankbuster to apply some pressure. Having a vehicle that we can crew with a summoning sick Phyrexian can also be useful, because sometimes we can make a Phyrexian right away, but we won't be able to attack with it since it still suffers some summoning sickness, and then now we can still use it to maybe crew a Bankbuster to attack for four. Then we're also playing the full set of Experimental Augury, a two mana instant that lets us take a look at the top three cards of our library and put one in hand, and we also get to proliferate, meaning we can add extra plus one counters to all our incubator tokens, as well as extra charge counters on the Bankbuster, and even extra loyalty counters on Tesseret, so we can quickly reach the minus six ultimate. 
And then to round out the deck we also have some counter spells with Make Disappear. And then at 4 mana we've got a couple sweepers with Depopulate. And the 5 mana version from March of the Machine is Sunfall, a 5 mana sorcery that exiles all creatures. And then we also get to Incubate X, where X is the number of creatures exiled this way. So that can also result into a huge incubator token that we can then turn into a Phyrexian. And then having all these sweepers also plays well with our incubator tokens, since we can potentially wipe the board, still have a bunch of incubators left over that we can then on the following turn turn into Phyrexians to start attacking. So we actually don't end up overextending too much into our own sweepers, which is nice. And then we also have two copies of the Might Stone and Weak Stone, playing this without Urza in the deck, even though you could potentially make room for it. But it's not really necessary here, just a nice top-end artifact that will make a 5-5 incubator token with a Seed Shark. And then when it enters, can give a creature minus 5, minus 5 until end of turn, or we can draw two cards. And then to also tap for double colors that we can use on abilities like our incubator tokens, or to maybe draw with our Bank Buster, or maybe even cast it. So those are all excellent synergies. And then our mana base has all 12 of the blue-white dual lands, including the Seachrome Coast, which can be a little bit awkward in the late game when it enters tapped, but it's still nice mana fixing to have to make sure we have blue early, still have double white late. And then a couple uh, channel lands as well with Soaring City and Iganjo offering a tiny bit more interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw and uh, we've got a keeper. Tempted to play a one mana Exarch, so we can maybe transform one of our incubator tokens on turn two. Although there's a chance our opponent's gonna play with fire here. Alright, so be it. Means our Inquisitor might survive now. Is our opponent on the red aggro? They must have picked up the Swiss Spear just now. So yeah, play Inquisitor. Next turn we'll see if we want to play Shark or if we want to play Exarch. And then we would love to pick up a Tesseret, especially Devastator to hit us for two. That works. So Shark would line up quite nicely. And then if I'm not planning to block with Inquisitor, I might as well attack with it. Happy to block Devastator, even if they can finish off my Shark, since we have another one. Just want to try and deplete their resources. It's going to be a Phoenix next. And this looks like I stoke the flames with Convoke. Alright, Shark down, but at least no damage. And there's Tesseret. Now, might want to play a Shark first, and then try and keep that one alive. And then next turn Tesseret could hit incredibly hard with the Shark. Or we could Tesseret anyway. And then uh, activate our Incubator, but then Tesseret's gonna fall to the Flyers. And then I could just play Exarch right now as well. I'll stay back with Inquisitor now just in case. Alright, opponent's attacking all out. If I take it, I'm taking 5, potentially 6, plus some more burn. So that adds up quickly. But then next turn I'll be able to Tesseret and make a pretty big artifact creature. Maybe block with Exarch, forcing the opponent to play a burn spell. Since I don't really need the Exarch anymore. And a lightning strike just goes upstairs. That's fine. So play Tesseret, trigger Shark, and then we can activate the Incubator that can attack right away. Activate the other one during the opponent's turn, and then Tesseret could also minus two, but kind of like plussing. Back up Tesseret. Yeah, I'll discard the lands, don't think I'll need them. This can attack, so can Inquisitor, and then we can still incubate our token here. And now if the shark dies, it's not too bad. We got our value. This 
Surprise Phyrexian. Lightning Strike to finish it off. Is there another burn spell for the shark? There's not. And then now we can play Awakening. And then I'm not going to minus two just yet, so we'll keep plussing. Can discard maybe a Bankbuster. Play this for zero and smash. And the shark now also has Vigilance, so can attack and block at the same time. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And I think we've got a Keeper here. Tempted to play a turn one Exarch. And then on turn three, we can Incubate right away and Transform. Concealing Curtains. Okay, there's another Exarch. Do we want to play a backup copy? This one I might keep to actually make additional tokens with. And then we can Augury for now. Can also hang on to it to maybe grow some of our tokens. But we've got a backup. Tazrat seems pretty good to take, although it is somewhat redundant when we already have Exarch making our Incubate tokens into Phyrexians. I think I should still take it. And then start with the Awakening. And then the Curtains might also go after Tezzeret here. Siphon Insights, fine. We could wait to play Inquisitor before we animate our Phyrexian so it gets an extra plus one counter. A Lilian of the Veil, fair enough. This is my home, and I don't appreciate so it. now we're kind of forced to go for it. And sack Exarch. Shark was a good draw. So attack Liliana. Vote on Trumps. And I'll play the Shark. So with a land, Tesseret would be a great play next turn. Assuming the Shark survives. What to discard here? Could be the Inquisitor. Could be the Exarch. I'm gonna go with uh, Inquisitor here. Bankbuster is fine. And we found a land. So play Tezzeret. And then we can immediately incubate this one. And then I could even minus to turn it into an even larger creature. That is tempting. Does not give haste, so we gotta make sure to target the one that can attack. Finish off Liliana, hit the opponent for 8. And still have a Tezzeret in case of a board wipe. The long reach of knights, probably not gonna do it. Discard. GG's. And uh, probably no need to do anything else. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems keepable. We've got Shark into Tesseret. And then now Bangbuster also quite nice with Tesseret. Opponent on a Jeskai deck with Impulse. Looks like a Iconoclast, maybe a Monastery Mentor deck. Yeah, let's play a Bangbuster for now. Suppose going for Augury makes it more likely that I can curve Shark into Tesseret by finding a land. Opponent plays announcement, so the exiled cards go to waste. Yeah, let's uh, play a shark. And 
may not survive here. Fateful Absence at least gives us a clue token, which also can maybe be sacrificed for free with Tezzeret. Sadly, our fourth land is tapped. Just means we get to play another Shark first. And then next turn, Tezzeret could make a 4-4 Incubate token. Draw with Bankbuster, sag the clue in the opponent's turn. Or maybe the other way around. Okay. So yeah, let's get uh, going here. And then Tezzeret might want to just minus. Uh, let's start by sacking the clue. Can play one mana Exarch. And then I could minus on the incubator token, turn that into a huge creature. And hang back to protect Tezzeret. And then now if they try and kill my token, I can still crew Bankbuster. Although if I crew Bankbuster, I can no longer draw with it, because that's the first ability I've used. There's Mentor, as we suspected. So we could also try and set up a Sunfall to wipe the board. Awakening for Vigilance is nice. Yeah, let's start with the Awakening. And then we can draw with a Bankbuster. Could also play Inquisitor before we animate more of our artifacts. Although Augury might be the move here. So, sure, can draw with Bankbuster. This one is not a Phyrexian yet, since we just turned it into a creature with Tezzeret. So I'll have to pay two mana if I want to give it Vigilance, but I don't think we need Vigilance necessarily. So let's attack with Shark and 8-8. Eight, eight. Bone and Trumps. And then Tezzeret can plus. Discard Exarch and maybe Inquisitor at this point. Pass a turn. And then we have a lot of options here. Can animate one of our incubator tokens with Tezzeret, one with Exarch. Augury triggers a Shark as well. I see Invasion making three knights. Your opponent's going to try and battle to get to Ferry. Do we see any attacks? We don't. So, yeah, I'm likely going to Sunfall now. So I don't want to animate any of my creatures anymore. Just get a land. And we can also add extra counters to the battle which will slow the opponent down. So we'll just untap and then attack with what I have in play or I can just sunfall. Since our opponent's gonna trump anyway and this way we get a larger sunfall token. Yeah, that looks good. Could augury first, I suppose. Just to get an extra 2-2 two -two token. Make disappear could be nice. Okay, and then can animate something that can actually attack, like this one. Tezzeret can keep plussing, so next turn we can maybe Emblem. And hit for six. Okay, so in the opponent's turn we can animate a 12-12 here, and then next turn Emblem Tezzeret, and then have a bunch of counter spells up, that should be game. And our opponent agrees, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a Keeper. 
Turn one Exarch. Turn two can decide between Make Disappear and Bank Buster. And then if we can get the Shark going, the Exarch can keep incubating the tokens here without needing to pay any mana for them. Opponent a Junt Color deck. Could be playing some of the new battles. For now, attack for one. Okay, Volcanic Spite. And play Sea Shark. And then if we can untap next turn, we'll be shields up on Mig Disappear and can draw with a Bank Buster. Opponent cycles proving ground. And invasion of Zendikar to ramp. Okay. That's fine. Countering that one would have been reasonable, since of course now Mig Disappear is not quite as effective when our opponent has more mana. But I'll keep Mig Disappear for the finishers. Any merit to drawing main phase in case we draw another Exarch, I suppose. Inquisitor will save. Okay, that one we cannot counter. I fight for every so they can actually transform the invasion here. Okay, they get a 4-4. Four, four. And a Vorinclex will happily counter. Make a token. And now with Inquisitor we can animate our token into a 3-3. Three, three. And finish off a Renant Realm Breaker. And then we can still either draw with Bankbuster or make another 3-3. Three, three. Another Vorinclex makes sense. So we might want to reset the board here with the Sunfall. In which case I may not want to make a pilot token yet. Invasion of Ixalan finds Invasion of Ergamon. Alright, if our opponent's attacking the battle and plays a Volcanic Spite, how do we react? So I could animate my token, which would be a 3-3, which can crew Bankbuster to trade for Skyclave. Or I can make my pilot jump with the pilot. And then next turn cast a Sunfall. Yeah, that seems probably fine here. Got a backup shark. And then now I can sunfall. And still incubate. Could attack with uh, Bangbuster 2 if we go for it here. Sure. Invasion of Fiora to wipe the board. That's okay. Between Bangbuster and our Phyrexian tokens, we play around sweepers quite well. So now I have the option of playing Shark, I can play Inquisitor, and then animate some of my Phyrexians, or I can just play Inquisitor, activate them both. Let's 
Well, I guess with the treasure, if we play Aiganjo, I can play Shark and activate them both. And then Shark and Inquisitor can crew Bankbuster. So make sure we don't animate the ones with Summoning Sickness. Another invasion of Fiora could be bad. But our opponent's forced to jump here. As we're attacking for 12. Down to 4. So I guess even a sweeper we could still animate Incubator, although then it's only a 2-2, not enough to crew Bankbuster. Opponent's doing a lot of hovering. Invasion of Argomon. Discard and draw. Run and Realm Breaker wasn't good enough. And Invasion of Ikoria for 6. What does it get? A Vorinclex. That's not going to be good enough here. Pretty nice that it can also get your tri lanes and a Tazeret. Nice finisher. Make token with the shark. And then we can animate our incubator token for free. And this one can help crew Bankbuster if we'd like. And Tazeret could also minus to grow some of our Phyrexians. Essentially gives it plus four plus four here. Toys will keep you busy. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Augury to maybe find a shark or a bank buster to synergize with Tezzeret. We found an Exarch. I think I'll play that on three. And then Tezzeret can animate the token turn four. Up against a red black with a butler, so a graveyard deck. Opponent gets to mill. No shark, backup Tazeret seems fine. If they take out Exarch, it's not a problem since we'll have Tazeret to animate our Phyrexian. And can do so in a few different ways. Could use a minus two. Or we could uh, just activate this for free. Liliana kills Exarch, that's fine. And depopulate. Alright, so time for Tezzeret. And then probably just want to loot with Tezzeret. While animating the Phyrexian. Opponent jumps right away. Doesn't get anything back. Well, one Tezzeret can certainly go. And do we need to depopulate? Maybe not. If we find a land, we can mine stone and weak stone as removal. Liliana pluses. Yeah, maybe let go of another Tesseret at this point. Although if there's Planeswalker removal in our future, I might regret it. Augury could be a nice way to ultimate Tesseret as well. So maybe to edge my bets, I could discard Exarch. And then if they kill Tesseret, I have a backup. If they don't, then Augury will let me ultimate, which could be game winning. Sure. Fable's fine. Okay. And we did find the land for Mindstone and Weakstone. But I'm kind of lacking Augury here. Find a shark. Proliferate. Do we want to proliferate onto Fable for any reason? I don't think so. And then... 
ultimate Tesserets. And now when our token becomes stamped, we'll get to draw. And the Mindstone and Weakstone becoming tapped also draws. So it's going to be really difficult for the opponent to keep up. Mindstone can also pay for a Incubator activation. So great with Bangbuster, great with Phyrexians. Probably sacrifice my Phyrexian, keep the shark, which can make more of those. And I don't think I block, it seems like her opponent might be holding a burn spell. Also possible they just have a 3 mana removal spell that they would be able to cast anyway. Nope, just another fable. That's acceptable. Okay. So, Mightstone versus Awakening, both are good. Mightstone gives us a pretty big mana advantage here, so that may be worth it. And can take out a Shaman, or we can draw two. Although we will be drawing a lot of cards regardless, so maybe killing a Shaman's a little bit better. And then... Can attack with the shark. And then tapping Mightstone will draw us another card. Maybe could have done it main phase, but may want to activate this at instant speed. I guess Awakening giving Vigilance to our Phyrexians could be a bit of a nombo with our emblem. but I'm sure we'll survive. Okay. So play backup Tesseret, maybe after playing another shark first. And then I'll immediately animate one of them using Tezzeret's discount before we tap any other artifacts. And then Tezzeret can keep plussing. Don't think we need to minus. Although I might want to attack first and see a few more cards. Another shark. That's plus. Augury's nice. Yeah, I don't think I need Awakening. And then I'll just pass a turn. Can use Mindstone in the opponent's turn to animate the Incubator or just use Tezzeret's Discount. But if there is a Sweeper incoming here, I don't want to put all my creatures on the battlefield. So now they could do the reflection, copy, reflection trick to make an army. Okay. Got a lot of options once again. Start with a shark. Play Bankbuster. Using the Might Stone, although then we lose Tezzeret's discount. At this point, that's probably fine. Play Inquisitor. And, uh, yeah, we can just start attacking here. Draw three more. Opponent can copy Reflection a bunch, but yeah, they're just gonna take it too far behind. 
could make another Phyrexian with two mana and then either draw with Bangbuster or animate another one in the opponent's turn, getting extra plus one counters along the way. Sweet. So yeah, we got to see our blue-white Tazeret Shark deck in action, and I was quite impressed by all the synergies. Tazeret, of course, great with Bankbuster, but now has a ton more synergies and ways to use its mana discount to the point where I think this might become one of the better decks in standard going forward. Definitely still could use some fine-tuning. I'm sure the perfect build hasn't been found, but the core of Tazeret with the Shark and then some number of Incubate seems like a very good place to be. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.